Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs, and freaks of nature of all ages. My name is Brian Bad Hippie Jackson, and welcome to my YouTube. And welcome back to Silver Creek Falls, Chapter 2. We are about to get into Episode 8, I believe it is, for the series. Um, in the last episode, let's go ahead and continue. In the last episode, uh, we found the contact contact in Trenton, went back to the hotel, found that room 801 was once again unlocked, and found another letter um, from between the Chinese triad and the Mexican cartel. They also mentioned Russians and Koreans, so it looks like there's a possibility of a huge organized crime war getting ready to go down somewhere. And then we got a call from the FBI. Uh, I'm liking Special Agent Valdez. He's pretty cool. But we got a call from his boss that said another incident happened in a town called Walleye Head, about 30 miles away from Silver Creek Falls. And that is where we are now, about to investigate the incident at Walleye Head. So let's go ahead and talk to this cop here, Sheriff Majors. That's me. I'm guessing you're at the FBI agent they sent to take a look at this. That's right. My name is Special Agent Valdez. This is Detective Sarah Fitzgerald. Sheriff, so what's going on here? Mighty strange case up here. Mighty strange indeed. I reckon you folks best take a look for yourselves. Can you please give us some background on what's going on? Certainly, ma'am. Last night, a lady named Maddie Coble called saying her husband and brother-in-law hadn't come home the previous night. The two brothers, named Chester and Eddie, both worked at this warehouse you see here. What was this warehouse for? I reckon best we mosey on in so I can explain things better. Y'all have pocket handkerchiefs on you? I tell you, it smells like a dead varmint in there. Lead the way. Look at all that blood everywhere. This might be even worse than the sorority house in Silver Creek Falls. Now y'all need to understand that they gut and clean fish here, so perhaps some of that blood could be fish blood. Thanks. Shall we get to work? Objective, survey and analyze the scene, collect any necessary evidence. And it looks like there is a dollar bill right there. Whatever that is, I can't get it. The place really stinks. When I got the call from Mrs. Coble, I reckon the first place I'd find Chester and Eddie would be the warehouse since this is where they work. Ah, it smells really bad. To answer your earlier question, this warehouse is where they pack frozen fish for the Swartz Fishing Corporation. That explains the smell. Goes to show what you know about fishing, boy. Fresh, fresh, fresh fish don't smell, nor does frozen fish. When I got here, not only did I find boxes of fish outside the freezer room, but this darn mess of blood and guts everywhere, too. Any bodies? Negative. Just blood everywhere and this darn mess of fish left outside. What'd you do next? Now I heard something mighty similar went down in Silver Creek Falls, so I sent my report to the chief of police in Charlotte. Attorney passed it on to the commissioner. Next thing I know, the FBI are involved. If you have any more questions, I'll be here. So are you closing the case here? I'm keeping a sharp eye out, but there is little else I can really do. There are no bodies, so I have so I there are no bodies, so I do have reason to believe the Coble brothers could still be alive. On the other hand, there's a lot of blood. Alright, so let's take a look at these holes. In the last episode, she blatantly mentioned the holes in the floor. Blood sample. Let's go ahead and collect up all the blood samples. Let's look at these fish. American shod. Fish added to inventory. I gotta collect all the fish, huh? Alright, I can do that. Blood sample. White perch. Blood sample. What's this thing on the wall? Power needed to activate freezer door. Okay, so we have no power. Blood sample. Let's go ahead and get this ones on the wall here. Blood sample. Lots of blood samples. Another one. Get this fish. A discarded fish. Man, it sucks that so much of this went to waste. Yep, after we file the paperwork, we're going to have to throw this all away. I'm guessing the frozen fish, too? Affirmative. There's just some bad juju on that fish. Sports Fisheries has been pressuring me to let their cleaners in already, but I wanted to keep it the way it was for you and to see what I saw. Swartz Fisheries, that rings a bell. Subsidiary of Swartz Banking Corporation. Its members descended from Jebediah Schwartz, the founder of Silver Creek Falls. Interesting. For a long time, they were the most influential family in the parts. They still have a lot of power, though. 
Birds of Bass, Roanoke Bass, fish added to inventory. Why is there a mattress here? There was another man who worked here. We knew him as Old Clyde. He slept here at night, too. He was homeless. Was he also reported as missing? Old Clyde ain't got no family. The only people who really knew him were Chester and Eddie. Heck, I don't even know if Clyde is his real name. You seem to know a few things about him. When you're sheriff of a town of 600 people, then there really ain't no one you know nothing about. Blood sample added to inventory. Another blood sample. These long stains have the tendency to give you multiple samples if you just go a space down them. Okay, let's get that one. And let's look at these boxes. Frozen walleye. Finish fish in the Atlantic. He misspelled Atlantic. If you ask me, the founders of this town liked it so much to name the whole darn town after it. Bullhead catfish. Roanoke, Roanoke bass. American shod. White perch. Okay, let's look at this. Why can't I get over there to do that blood sample? Huh. Blood sample added to inventory. Blood sample added to inventory. More blood. More blood. Oh, there's just so much blood. So much blood. All over the place. Blood, 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 blood. Blood and fish. More blood. What kind of fish we got here? This one's out of place. It looks like an arctic char. You seem to know your fish, Sheriff. Everyone around here knows their fish. It's a fishing town, but this arctic char really don't belong. How are you sure it's an arctic char? My brother lives in Newfoundland. I go up north to go fishing with him when I get the chance. That there is arctic char. Now, whatever the hell it's doing down here is a mystery to me. So we have an arctic char added to the inventory. Let's get this hunk of blood. That blood, that blood, what fish is that? And of course this is a walleye, okay. Our local catfish. Okay, what do we got here? That cabinet's open. Yuck, this gray water has been sitting here for days. Valdez, check this out. Oh my god. That's a goat head, isn't it? It really reeks. It's been in there for a while. It's so gross it still has the hair and horns on it. Any sign of the rest of the goat? Nope, just the head. That's really weird. Nobody raises goats around here. I wonder where they got it from. There's more. A bottle of blood and some candles. They'll be the devil to pay. Something unholy happened here. There were always rumors that the Cobo brothers weren't all right in the head, but this? Let's not speculate anything yet. Sheriff, please add all this to the pile of evidence. What do we got here? Nothing. Employees must wash hands before resuming work. Is this extinguisher the right one for a warehouse like this? Nope, that fire extinguisher is not up to code. Looks like I'll have to find Schwartz Fisheries for the violation. So they need the industrial size one, right? Yep, they have a big generator at the back to power all the freezers. They need an extra large industrial fire extinguisher since they own one of those. Generator, you mean they aren't connected to the grid? Nope, we're miles away from Walleye Head itself. Why is this packing house so far away from the town? The fishermen drop off their catch here before heading back to port. Saves on transportation fees since this warehouse sits by the river. So no chances of any witnesses for whatever happened here last night? No, ma'am. Should bring the power back on. Okay, so if that brought the power on, then I should be able to go down into that room. What the hell? What was that? Did you see that? I saw something in the corner of my eye. Door shut, too. Must have been the stored air pressure from the freezer room. Still doesn't explain that thing I saw. What the crap? Now it won't open. We can walk there through the fence outside. 
Well, yeah, we're going to have to walk there to the thing. I want to know what the hell that was. That was freaky. And I want to know how I get to that thing right there. Still not able to get it. All right, let's start with blood sample. Frozen walleye. Blood sample. Frozen Roanoke bass. Frozen catfish. Wait, is that? No, it can't be. It is. Dagnammit, it's a foot. Here, I have a plastic bag. What the hell happened here? Looks fresh. Look, the meat is still reddish. Thank you, Sheriff. Let's have that sent to forensics in Durham. Yes, ma'am. Blood sample and foot. Don't forget foot added to inventory. Frozen perch. Blood sample. Achievement unlocked. They are dead fish. Ah, I didn't want to do that. Well, maybe I did. Okay, so now let's go back down this way. We should probably take a look around back quickly. It was probably just the wind from the generators. I know what I saw, I think. Remember, old Clyde did have one other friend. Really? Who? A Native American na man named Eric Johnson. See, when old Clyde appeared here in Walleye Head, most of the town folks were none too pleased and didn't receive him very well. Eric, knowing a thing or two about being disenfranchised, was very kind to Clyde. He gave Clyde a job at his convenience store and even let him stay at his house. So what happened? When the tornado hit two years ago, poor Eric lost his convenience store and house. Seeing it as a sign, he gave old Clyde half his savings and left while I had. What a generous man. If you believe in karma, you'll like this story. He moved to Oklahoma and ended up making it big there. That's awesome. What business? I understand this may sound like a cliche, but he owns a casino. Of course. You could try to track him down to ask some questions, but I don't think the two of them were in touch. If you're trying to look for him, you won't find him looking for Eric Johnson. He now goes by Golden Hawk. That's also the name of his casino. Thanks for all your help, Sheriff. My pleasure, son. Wait, are you considering going to Oklahoma to follow this lead? Seems like a bit of a weak lead, so probably not. Besides, we really should get back to this case in Silver Creek Falls. You think this case is related? Most likely. So we done here? That'll be all, Sheriff. You all have the evidence and samples? Sarah hands Sheriff all the blood samples and evidence. Yep. Achievement unlocked. There's always a bigger fish. We need to continue on to Silver Creek Falls, but I'll type up a report and maybe someone from D.C. might come down later and have a look. All right, but I still want to go around back. There's a hole in the fence. Property of Schwartz Fishery is limited. No trespassing. Any trespassers will be prosecuted. That's odd. More soft animal hair. Animal hair is added to inventory. There's a hole in the fence there. Let's look at these walls, see if I can get any blood samples off of them. What about the hole in the wall here? Nothing. When I was doing my edit on the other one, I noticed some holes in the wall around. Why must we look here? There is nothing but trash. Because we are investigators and we investigate. Yeah, go ahead and hate me sometimes, but I'm still looking. Okay, so nothing there. Let's check the power box. Nothing there. All right, back over to the hole in the fence. Looks like someone cut through the fence. Whoever did this did a really messy job of it. Old AC units. I heard something. Did you guys did you guys heard something? There's something back here. I know I heard something. I have no doubt in my mind I heard something. I want to know what it was. Heard it again. There's something going on behind this.
Huh. Odd. Oddness and stuff. Okay, let's head on over to Silver Creek Falls and see what we find. That, well, let's go check down here. We haven't checked by the water yet. Nothing there. Nothing. Okay. Just making sure. Have to be thorough. Have to be so very thorough. The Beaumont Rocky Mount, Nash County, North Carolina. Well, he loves them Beaumonts, don't he? Oh, no, not again. They even have one here. Welcome to the Beaumont Rocky Mount. Valdez, this is pushing it. We're not even in Hawthorne County. We're like two hours away from Silver Creek Falls. They have their own hotel there, you know. You know, I want to spend as little time as possible in Silver Creek Falls. Oh, yeah, Special Agent West. I'm sorry, I forgot. Besides, I've accumulated enough points to give myself the deluxe room tonight. Seriously, how did you become an FBI agent? Did you collect 10 chocolate wrappers and win a job there or something? No, nah, man, that's ridiculous. I only had to collect five. <laughs> I like Valdez. Sarah is being, yeah, I don't know, but she's not being cool with him t in this episode. Oh, crap wrong way but Valdez is pretty groovy the barbecue channel how is this even a thing we take our barbecue very seriously here in the south yes they do I know that from experience what an awesome channel I'm gonna to try to add this to my cable package at home I like Valdez him and his food he likes food and I like food we get along okay Mr. Valdez, always a pleasure to see you. Likewise, Giacomo, two rooms for the night, please. Right away, Mr. Valdez. Oh, you have enough points to upgrade one room for the night. Would you like to? Absolutely. Please. There we go. Ricardo called earlier to tell me that you were coming. Ms. Fitzgerald, you have room 803 again. As for you, Mr. Valdez, you have the penthouse. Sweet. I'm sorry, Giacomo, but I need to ask. Are Stefano and Ricardo your brothers? Why, yes. How did you know? Wild guess. When you've been a cop as long as I have, you get wicked good at observing things like this. Okay. Still pretty early. You want to go through some of these case files together? Um, tonight's the last episode of Mr. Chef. I kind of really wanted to watch it. It's only 6 o'clock. Doesn't it start at like 7.30? I was going to buy some popcorn and pastrami sandwich. I also wanted to get my hands on some Mexican-style barbecue. Also, if we look up a lead this evening, we might end up chasing it and ending up in some crazy part of the state by nighttime. Besides, aren't the Red Sox playing tonight? Oh, yeah. How could I have forgotten? Deal. Let's take the night off. How'd you know I like the Red Sox? Please, your Boston accent is so thick, I thought I had Mark Wahlberg in the car with me. Awesome! <laughs> Boston born and bred, baby. Okay, let's see. Can I go to the penthouse this time? Gentleman to swap rooms. About his fancy FBI pass. Okay, so I'll go to my hotel. Is 801 going to be unlocked again? The door is open. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, please don't let there be anybody in there. Yep, here it is again. Letter in the drawer. Have to read this one, right? Yes. Dear Mr. Ortega, it's done. After hours and hours of work, I think our chefs did it. Once we release the sweet and sour chicken burrito and the pork chipotle spring roll, People will think twice before messing with Ortega's Taqueria and Mr. Lou's Dumpling House. With these fine products, we will finally dominate the El Dorado Shopping Center food court once and for all. No longer will we bow down to the power of the clown. I can now see the envy seething out of the eyes from the employees of Kimchi Express and Pizzeria Luca as we steal all the customers. Kind regards, Lu Zhao Wen. P.S. Yes, I did pick up your gift from Moscow. I must say that Idaho is a truly beautiful state and I really enjoyed my time in Moscow, Idaho. Oh man. Achievement unlocked. What's the secret letter? That's kind of cool. A big old wild goose chase about... Surprise, surprise. The room is identical. A big wild goose chase about the competitiveness of the fast food market. That was pretty cool. Sweet Caroline, da da da. Okay. I know the score. Achievement unlocked. Yay! Another achievement unlocked. Seems this case has 
It's constantly moving. Vest I still don't unpack. Okay, let's check over here on this side. Nothing. And go to bed. Yes. Day four. And we're pushing 20 minutes, so we'll get back down into the lobby. We'll talk to Valdez, and then we'll call it good on Silver Creek Falls, episode eight. I hope you slept well, like a baby, thanks. Pass the key to the concierge, blah, blah, blah. Check the TV one more time. Ah! One, one too many button pushes. Don't. Good morning, Valdez. Ready to go? Okay, so this is the fax of the note that was found in Deputy Hill's house. Interesting. Do you have Lee Davis encrypted file? Assume A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals 3, D equals 4, E equals 5, etc. 5178, use the cipher to unlock the message. Here we go. Encrypted note added to inventory. Back to Silver Creek Falls. Let's do it. Silver Creek Falls, Hawthorne County, North Carolina. Are we cool to park here? The new sheriff is a pretty cool guy and he told me that I could park in front of the police station if I wanted. Shall we get to work? Yes, here is a map of Silver Creek Falls. I already have one. That old one has a typo. It's listed Apothecary Road as Atlantic Highway. Anyway, this new one is better. All right, let's go to work. The encrypted note looks quite tricky. Just so you know, I have a friend who works at the library who's good at that sort of thing. This doesn't look too bad. I think we'll be fine. Objective, decipher the encrypted note to reveal your next lead. You can now access the map in the menu by hitting escape. To access the encrypted note and the clue, search your inventory and look at the notes available there. Escape. Local map. Okay, and we have a pocket theory road. The library is listed as well. It's a little bit better, but not a whole lot better. Okay, let's go ahead and save the game. And we're going to drop it into save file 2 this time. And in game, to title. And we're going to call that good on Silver Creek Falls Chapter 2, Episode 8 for the series. Please do not forget to check the links in the description below for the Wounded Warriors Project and the Disabled American Veterans. Please help us support our veterans. Don't forget, New Year's Eve, beginning at 8 p.m. Mountain Time and going until New Year's Day, 2 a.m. Mountain Time. Bad Hippie's first annual charity live stream. All proceeds to benefit the Wounded Warriors Project. If you like the video, then hit the like button, subscribe, and share. Tell your friends and family to hit the like button subscribe and share and please don't forget to ring my bell leave me a comment all comments always welcome good bad or somewhere in between please leave me a comment thank you very much for watching i greatly appreciate your love and support and until next time this is brian bad hippie jackson saying peace love clean underwear and happy gaming